Just about every Game of Thrones fan knows the story of Aegon the Conqueror. He was Daenerys Targaryen's ancestor, who united the Seven Kingdoms, except Dorne, he kind of fumbled the bag in Dorne, and built King's Landing and the Iron Throne. We don't know a whole lot about the kind of man or type of ruler he was, since the majority of his story exists within the context of war, the conquest and the war on Dorne. He reigned for 24 years after retiring from warfare, and those 24 years are referred to as the Dragon's Peace. Most of his time was spent on royal tours of the realm, since Aegon believed he should show his face in every castle of his new realm. He visited the Iron Islands thrice, the North six times, and all over the Reach, the Westerlands, and everywhere else. However great of a king Aegon was, there's not a chance in the Seven Hells that he was a worse king than his two degenerate sons, Aenys I Targaryen and Maegor I Targaryen. This video is the first in a series I'll be doing on the Sons of the Dragon. Look out for a second video on Maegor the Cruel in about a week or so. For now, let's look at how Aenys the Idiot became the first example of how being a Targaryen Dragonlord doesn't necessarily make you a worthy king. As children, Aenys and Maegor were not exactly close. Aenys was born to Rhaenys before her death in Dorne, while Maegor was born to Visenya. However, there are rumors and theories that neither of them are actually Aegons. That Aenys' father might be a silver-haired singer that Rhaenys loved to host in the Red Keep, and that Maegor was a product of Visenya's sorcery. It is weird that Aegon married two women as a young man, and only had two sons in 40 plus years of marriage. But we'll just assume Aenys and Maegor are Aegon's trueborn sons, and that the entire dynasty of House Targaryen isn't descended from a bastard, because that would be silly and ironic and actually kind of fitting since Jon Snow is a Targaryen bastard and the present rhymes with the past. Oh wait, maybe Aegon isn't the father. Aenys was born first, in 7 AC. Throughout his infancy and early childhood, he was small and sickly and nothing at all like his father Aegon. That changed a bit when he bonded with his dragon Quicksilver, who was also hatched in 7 AC on Dragonstone. It's often hinted that a dragon bond can strengthen a dragon rider, or potentially heal them, like how Jaehaerys I decided that a dragon bond was needed to cure his daughter Daenerys, who was dying of a sickness called the Shivers. Quicksilver may have helped Aenys grow into a capable man, but as we'll see, it didn't make him any better of a ruler. Maegor was born in 12 AC, so he was 5 years younger than Aenys. No newborn was ever more robust than Maegor Targaryen. Maesters and midwives agreed. His weight at birth was almost twice that of his elder brother. Even though they were brothers, they didn't spend much time together. King Aegon spent half of every year on royal progresses, and he always took Prince Aenys with him, so the realm could become acquainted with the heir to the Iron Throne. Maegor stayed behind with Visenya while she held court, and when Aegon was in King's Landing, Visenya went and held court in Dragonstone. Visenya gave Maegor a sword when he was three, and it is rumored that with his first swing, he butchered a cat. Over time, Maegor became known as the Prince of Dragonstone, and was taught how to fight by Garwin Corbray, the master at arms of Dragonstone. Aenys learned to fight as well, and he had better teachers than Maegor, as he was trained directly by Aegon the Dragon and the Knights of the Kingsguard. But Aenys was never more than adequate as a fighter even when Aegon let him use Blackfire, the ancestral Valyrian steel sword of Targaryen kings. On Maegor's 13th name day, in 25 AC, Visenya bestowed upon him Dark Sister, the sibling blade to Blackfire, later used by Aemon the Dragon Knight, Bloodraven, and the rogue prince, Daemon. Maegor was taller, stronger, and more capable than his elder brother, but he didn't have a dragon, and Aenys did. Traditionally, Valyrian heirs wed their sister, as the blood of the dragon must remain pure. Aegon liked the idea so much that he married two sisters, but he never had any daughters and would need to look elsewhere for his son's spouses. In 22 AC, at the age of 15, Aenys married Alyssa Valerion, the daughter of the Lord of the Tides, Aethon Valerion. She was also 15 and had the customary Valyrian silver hair and purple eyes. Aegon the Conqueror's own mother was a Valerion, so it is reckoned that Aenys' marriage to Alyssa was that of cousin to cousin, 
not quite brother to sister, but still incestuous enough to get the job done. The next year, Alyssa gave birth to a daughter, Reyna. She was a healthy child with lively lilac eyes and hair that shone like beaten silver. King Aegon wept the first time he held his granddaughter, perhaps because she reminded him of his first love, Rhaenys. Visenya raised the issue of succession, wanting her son Maegor to remain second in line to the throne after Aenys, instead of Aenys' daughter. Visenya went on to propose that Reyna, an infant, should be betrothed to Maegor, who was eleven. But Aenys and Alyssa spoke out against the match, and so too did the Faith. The High Septon wrote to King Aegon from Old Town, telling him that the incestuous match would not go down favorably with the Faith. The High Septon recommended his own niece, Cerise Hightower, as a wife for Maegor instead, and Aegon agreed, wanting to keep peace with the Faith of the Seven. So two years later, in 25 AC, Maegor wed Cerise in the Starry Sept of Old Town, a building he would return to years later as king. The next year, a son was born to Aenys and Alyssa, named Aegon, so Maegor was officially moved down in the line of succession. By 36 AC, Aenys and Alyssa had three more children, Viserys, Jaehaerys, and Alysanne. Maegor would not inherit the Iron Throne. While Aenys and Alyssa filled the Red Keep with heirs, Maegor fought. He won the Tourney of Riverrun Melee in 28 AC, as he unhorsed three knights of the Kingsguard and King Aegon knighted Maegor using Blackfire. In 29 and 30 AC, Maegor fought on the Stepstones, ridding them of the pirate king Sargoso San. In 31 AC, Maegor hunted and killed an infamous robber knight in the Riverlands, known as the Giant of the Trident, and he did all of it without a dragon. By the age of nine, Aenys' daughter Reyna had bonded with her dragon Dreamfire, while Prince Maegor, a man of 18 years, remained dragonless. A dozen hatchlings had been born in the fires of Dragonstone in the later years of Aegon's reign and were offered to Prince Maegor. He refused them all. When she was 12, Reyna began to fly Dreamfire above the city, and Alyssa Valerion teased Maegor about it in court, saying that my good brother is afraid of dragons. Maegor wasn't afraid of them. He darkened in rage and said that there was only one dragon worthy of him. In 37 AC, King Aegon Targaryen died of a stroke in the chamber of the Painted Table on Dragonstone. His grandsons Aegon and Viserys were with him at his death, as the king was showing them on the table where he fought and conquered their realm. Prince Maegor gave the eulogy over his father's funeral pyre, as it was Valyrian custom to burn dead dragonlords. Visenya's dragon, Vagar, supplied the flame to light the pyre. Aegon was clad in his battle armor and Blackfire was laid on his chest. Blackfire burned, but flame cannot harm Valyrian steel. Maegor returned to his father's pyre later on and retrieved the sword. King Aenys then ascended the Iron Throne at the age of 30. Prince Maegor was 25. At first, he took Aegon's iron and ruby crown, and all the lords who had traveled for the funeral knelt before him and bowed their heads to their new king. When Prince Maegor's turn came, Aenys drew him back to his feet, kissed his cheek, and said, Brother, you need never kneel to me again. We shall rule this realm together, you and I. Then the king presented his father's sword, Blackfire, to his brother, saying, You are more fit to bear this blade than me. Wield it in my service, and I shall be content. Now Maegor had both ancestral swords of House Targaryen. Now that Aegon and the dragon had died, the realm began to test King Aenys. The chains the dragon forged can yet be broken, is what was being said by the downtrodden and discontented. We can win our freedoms back, but now is the time to strike, for this new king is weak. Soon enough, four rebellions began in Westeros. The first was in the Riverlands, where the outlaw known as Red Heron seized Harrenhal. As Aene sat in Riverrun, unwilling to strike at the castle on Quicksilver as his father once did on Balerion. The second uprising was on the Iron Islands, where a zealot called the Priest King Lodos raised thousands of swords against the king. The third was in the Dornish Marches, where an outlaw called the Vulture King gathered thousands of swords of his own to take revenge against all the burnings done by Aegon and his sisters in Dorne. The fourth and final rebellion was high up in the Vale of Arryn, 
where the young Lord Ronald Aaron was taken captive by his younger brother, Janos Aaron, who wanted to rebel against the Targaryens. Aenys did nothing to crush any of these rebellions. His lords did his work for him. Aenys spoke of sending messengers to the rebels to learn the reasons for their actions, instead of casting them away with fire and blood. Aenys finally resolved to send Hand of the King Alan Stokeworth, along with a fleet and an army, to the Vale to set down Jono's Aaron. But at the final hour, Aenys changed his mind and feebly decided that Stokeworth's departure would weaken King's Landing's defenses. So he sent him on a shorter mission to the Riverlands to hunt down Red Heron. He planned to call a great council to decide how to deal with the other rebels. While Annie sat on the throne, confused, his lords acted, either on their own authority or as commanded by Dowager Queen Visenya. In the Vale, Lord Allard Royce of Runestone marched on the Eyrie, easily defeating the soldiers belonging to Janos Aaron, who had styled himself King of Mountain and Vale. But when Royce demanded the return of Ronald Aaron, Janos threw his brother out of the moon door. As we all know, the Eyrie is impregnable, so Janos Aaron settled in for a long siege. That is until a great black beast rose high in the sky above the castle. Magor Targaryen had claimed a dragon at last, Valerion the Black Dread. The largest and fiercest dragon alive, the last living creature to have seen old Valyria. Magor had been waiting for his father Aegon to die before bonding with the dragon he felt he deserved. Instead of being burned alive inside the Eyrie, the garrison opted for surrender, and threw Janos out of the moon door just as he had done to Ronald. When Magor entered the castle, he executed every one of them, despite their surrender, and hung them all naked from the castle walls. The other rebellions also sorted themselves out. Lord Gorin Greyjoy descended upon the priest King Lodos with a hundred longships and made short work of the rebels. As a reward, Aenys offered Gorin Greyjoy any prize he wanted, like how Viserys offered Daemon any prize he wanted after returning from the Stepstones. Like how Daemon asked for Rhaenyra's hand in marriage, Gorin Greyjoy asked too much. He desired for all the Septons and Septas to be expelled from the Iron Islands so they could practice their religion of the Drowned God in peace. King Aenys made the poor decision of agreeing to Lord Greyjoy's request which was the first of many transgressions against the faith. Princess Doria Martell of Dorne had denounced the Vulture King in the Dornish marches, but some suspected her of playing King Aenys for a fool, since she never sent any soldiers against the rebels. The Vulture King had amassed an army 30,000 strong, but he was an idiot and divided his army. He marched west against Nightsong and Hornhill, while the other half of his army marched east to Stonehelm. In the east, Lord Oris Baratheon, Aegon's lifelong friend who helped him win the kingdom, crushed that half of the Vulture King's army. In the west, the Vulture King himself was caught between Savage Samuel Tarly of Hornhill and Harmon Dondarrion of Blackhaven. The Dornish had lost. Finally, Red Heron was caught by Hand of the King Alan Stokeworth just west of the God's Eye, but Red Heron was able to slay Lord Stokeworth. Stokeworth's squire, Bernard Brun, avenge the hand of the king, and Aenys granted him a knighthood for killing Red Heron. Aenys rewarded all the lords and knights who helped cast down all these rebels, but he saved the best reward for his younger brother Magor. King Aenys embraced Prince Magor in front of the cheering crowd of King's Landing, and named him Hand of the King. Their personalities were too different to allow them to work well together. Aenys started to get into astronomy, alchemy, and music, and started wearing the finest velvets in the realm, and enjoyed the company of maesters and septons. Magor lived for war, however, and he ran the realm without any of the trust or forgiveness of his brother. They ruled together well enough for two years, but in 39 AC, Magor announced that his wife, Ceres Hightower, was infertile and unable to give him a child. Without asking Aenys' permission, Magor secretly took a second wife on Dragonstone, aided by his mother Visenya. It was Alice Haraway, the daughter of the Lord of Harrenhal. The Septon of Dragonstone refused to officiate the marriage on the basis of polygamy, so Magor married Alice in a customary Valyrian ceremony, wed by blood and fire. King Aenys, Manfred Hightower, the Lord of Oldhound and father of Magor's first wife, Cerise, 
and the High Septon were all wroth with Prince Megor, but Megor was defiant. He said that their father took two wives, and that the laws of the faith may rule lesser men, but not the blood of the dragon. So King Aenys gave his brother a choice, set Alice Haraway aside and return to Lady Cerise, or be exiled from the realm for five years. Megor chose exile, and left for Pentos in 40 AC on the back of Balerion the Black Dread, taking Alice Haraway with him. It is said that Aenys asked Megor to leave Blackfire behind, and Megor responded, your grace is welcome to try and take her from me. The High Septon was still thundering and angry, and the lords of the realm spoke of the king's weakness. How can he rule the Seven Kingdoms when he cannot even rule his brother, they said. Aenys was oblivious to the dissent amongst his lords, and a year later in 41 AC, he made his worst mistake of his life. He announced the marriage of his first two children, Reyna and Aegon, to each other. With the faith already angry at Magor's polygamy, and with their warning to Aegon the Conqueror not to betroth Reyna and Magor on the grounds of incest, it's shocking that Aenys would make a decision so bold and stupid, knowing full well he had zero balls to back it up. Reyna was 18, and Aegon 15. Aegon hadn't claimed a dragon, but he was said to be the spitting image of his grandfather and namesake, the Conqueror, and was very close with his sister. He often rode with Reyna on Dreamfire. Aegon was said to be the best fighter with a lance in the Seven Kingdoms, and was desired by all the young ladies of the realm. Reyna too had many suitors, but she gave no encouragement to them, preferring to spend her time with her siblings, her pets, and her dragon. Reyna flew Dreamfire all across the realm, to Goldtown and Harrenhal and Runestone and Tarth. Since both siblings were close, and both were at risk of losing their virtue to an admirer, it made sense to King Aenys that his children should be wed to each other, according to the traditions of his house. We read in Fire and Blood that the Faith had condoned, or at the very least ignored, the marriage of the Conqueror and his sisters, but it was not willing to do the same for their grandchildren. From the Starry Sept came a blistering condemnation, denouncing the marriage of brother to sister as an obscenity. Any children born of such a union would be abominations in the sight of gods and men. This message spread like wildfire across the realm, but surprisingly, the famously indecisive King Aenys remained stubborn. His aunt, Dowager Queen Visenya, told him he had two options. He could abandon the marriage and find new partners for his children, or he could mount Quicksilver, fly to the Starry Sept in Old Town, and burn it down around the High Septon's pious head. Of course, King Aenys did neither. He just sat there. The wedding was held at the Sept of Remembrance, atop the Hill of Rhaenys in King's Landing. Warrior sons lined the streets, taking note of which traitors to the faith decided to attend this unholy ceremony. At the wedding feast, Aenys named Aegon the Prince of Dragonstone, despite the fact Magor still held that title. Visenya left the feast in anger, mounted Vagar, and flew to Dragonstone, leaving her kingly nephew behind to make all the bad decisions he desired. So the dumb dumb Aenys announced a massive royal tour of the realm, in which Reyna and Aegon would travel to all the kingdoms to meet with and be cheered by the citizens of the realm. Aenys failed to realize that the realm now hated incest, and since he forbade Reyna from bringing Dreamfire along on the royal progress, they lacked defenses. The crowds of the faithful shouted at Reyna and Aegon wherever they went, and when they reached Harrenhal, Lord Haraway denied them entry unless they recognized his daughter, Alice Haraway, who Magor took as a second wife, as the true and lawful wife of Prince Magor. Reyna and Aegon refused. Meanwhile in King's Landing, the warriors of the Faith began to fortify the Sept of Remembrance and the Hill of Rhaenys. The enemy now had a stronghold within the King's city, and even sent two assassins into the King's bedchamber, but luckily they were defeated by the Kingsguard. After that, Aenys and Alyssa packed up and moved to Dragonstone. Dowager Queen Visenya met King Aenys there, and said, You are a fool and a weakling, nephew. Do you think any man would have ever dared speak so to your father? You have a dragon. Use him. Fly to Old Town and make this starry sept another Harrenhal. Or give me leave, and let me roast this pious fool for you. Instead of either of those two solid options, Aenys locked up Visenya in her bedchamber. 
By the end of 41 AC, the realm was in a full-fledged rebellion against the crown. Dozens of pious lords throughout the Seven Kingdoms took up the cry, pulling down the king's dragon banners and declaring instead for the Starry Sept. The warrior's sons seized the gates of King's Landing, giving them control over who might enter and leave the city. Thousands of poor fellows took to the roads, forcing travelers to declare whether they stood with the gods or if they stood with the abomination. In the Westerlands, Prince Aegon and Princess Reyna were forced to abandon their progress and take shelter in Craighall Castle. In 42 AC, King Aenys remained on Dragonstone, sick with indecision. It is said he looked a man of 60 instead of 30, and was often bedridden with sickness. Visenya took care of him for a time, and his health began to improve until word reached him of a group of poor fellows, an order of fighters of the Faith Militant, who had surrounded Castle Craycall, where his children, Reyna and Aegon, were trapped inside. The news was so troubling that King Aenys died three days after hearing it. Like his father, Aenys was burned on Dragonstone. His sons Viserys and Jaehaerys, who were twelve and seven respectively, as well as his daughter Alysanne, who was five, stood over his funeral pyre. His wife Alyssa sang a sad song, and Quicksilver lit the pyre his dragon flame being joined by that of Vermithor and Silverwing as well. King Aenys accomplished nothing and ruined almost everything in his five years as king, from 37 to 42 AC. He seemed to be a good enough father, however, as his five children, Reyna, Aegon, Viserys, Jaehaerys, and Alysanne, all seemed normal and well-adjusted and not insane. That is sort of a low bar, and maybe their mother Alyssa was more responsible for their positive upbringing. Jaehaerys and Alysanne would later become the most successful and longest reigning monarchs in Targaryen history. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before Jaehaerys could ever ascend the Iron Throne, his uncle Maegor would need to be dealt with. In my next video, I will tell the story of Maegor the Cruel's reign, downfall, and addiction to marrying hot women. Thanks for watching.